Jesus being the Son of God is your truth, correct? It's about truth. No, is it your truth? It's about truth. I'm asking you a question. Is it your truth? I believe it's the truth. Whatever. I know it to be the truth. I believe that it's not the truth. But that doesn't Whoa. change reality. It truth and reality. Two very important things that used to mean something way back when. But boy, have they taken a beating. I mean, when you take truth and reality and you sort of relegate them to personal, subjective, relativistic elements, they don't end up meaning anything, which is kind of crazy because your whole point in trying to say that you have your truth and I have my truth is to kind of say that there is a truth that neither of us have truth, which is kind of a truth. As you saw in this video, that new friend that I made, Davin, was trying to push on me that this is my truth. There aren't a lot of things in life that I really, really hate, but this is one of them that I absolutely detest and loathe and abhor. And if I could think of some more synonyms, trust me, I would use those too. It's when people talk about your truth. No, that's your truth. As you saw with Davin, I pushed back. It's not about my truth and your truth. The bottom line is it's the truth and it doesn't matter what my opinion of it is and what your opinion of it is. The bottom line is what is the truth? The thing I loved about my friend Davin is that he is of Jewish descent and I am, as many of you know, of Arab descent. Ray Comfort and I are of Jewish descent and of Arab descent and there has been great peace between us. But what happened here with my new friend Davin? Did we have World War III? You'll have to watch and find out. So Davin, I, I couldn't help but uh, get captured by you. I was just walking around here at Huntington and I hear this voice just booming. I'll tell you what, here in Huntington Beach, man, we live in paradise, okay? Boardwalk is phenomenal. You know, there's a 10 mile an hour speed limit, all right? And I'm a rule breaker. So notice I've got the electric <laughs> bike, it goes 20. You seem to have a zest for life. Uh, where does it come from? I'm three months into my retirement, right? Ah. So, yeah, okay. I'm living life. All right, David, so let me ask you this. Sure. Okay, you've, you've been on this earth 56 years. You've had children. Uh, you, you know, and you, three grandkids. Oh, three, yeah. okay, I've got one, so I'm, I'm behind you, but I'm yeah. catching up. Do you ever step back and ask yourself, what is the meaning of life? I do. Okay, and what have you come up with? I, here's the meaning of life. The meaning of life is this. Help as many people as you can. Live every day the best you possibly can. I mean, we live on this planet. We're, we're bound to have to sleep every night, wake up every morning. Do you ever step back and say, wh where did this all come from? I'm a Christian. I believe in the existence of God you know, it's and funny in his because, reality. Uh, because I believe in a power greater than myself, easy. Yeah. There's all, everybody's gonna experience hardship in their life, okay? But without hardship, a person never can become humble. And as soon as you take a power into your life that's greater than you, you become a happier person. Everything is great. Where do you get your values for those things? What do you base those on? God, that's a great question, Easy. You ever I've thought never, of that? No, I never have. Yeah. One of the most important things you can do when you're sharing the gospel with people is to ask questions. Sometimes we hesitate to do that because we're kind of concerned about what the response might be. But as you just saw with my friend Davin, God, that's a great question. There are times when you will be delightfully surprised by the answer. I really didn't know how Davin was going to respond, but I've come to find that typically when you ask that specific question, where do you get that from or, or what do you base that on? Oftentimes it'll make people pause because at the end of the day, they'll end up realizing, oh, I hmm, kind of made that up. <laughs> and when someone makes something up that they are waxing eloquently about, they end up realizing, yeah, there's really no foundation to that. There, there's no objective authority. This is just kind of me talking. And so the fact that Davin said, hey, that's a good question. I've never thought about that. will hopefully get him thinking about that. So the moral of the story is friends, ask questions. I mean, when you look at life and you see people calling things evil, things good, uh, this is a virtue, this isn't a virtue, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. Do people ever stop and think, where do these things come from? My kids were all raised Jewish. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I mean, if you want to hear it. Oh, I'd love it. Judaism is one of the only religions out there. You can't just show up and say, hey, I believe. No, you have to study. And you have to study and you have to learn the Talmud and you have to learn what the history is like throughout the, the three different types of Judaism, right? There's Reform, Conservative, and, uh, and Orthodox. And um, with those different types of religions, then you choose which religion 
do you want to follow and why? And then once you do all that, you go in front of a rabbi and you say, hey rabbi, I've decided to become Jewish. Can you convert me? And yeah. he'll say, and he'll ask you all these questions and he'll say, yes, you're converted or no, you're not. So on the basis of Judaism, do you think you're good enough to enter God's kingdom? <laughs> Stop. That's a question I can't answer. You'd have to ask God that. Okay, but yeah, based on based on what your understanding is, is obviously you were saying that there's a standard and you've got to meet it. Davin, as much as you love life, my father, believe it or not, we just celebrated his 111th birthday. Wow. Yeah, this past January. Holy yeah. mackerel. So I'm 83, but plastic surgery. You talk about more, more, more yesterdays than you have tomorrow's. Right. <laughs> So, Woo! you know, but, and I know, I know from our perspective, that's, wow, a, that's a, long yeah, that's a super long time, but I can assure you for him, it's been about the blink of an eye. So we're all yeah. going to die. I know that sometimes we can roll the dice and gamble and say, ah, whatever, we'll see what happens then. But that's the one thing I'm sure you'd agree, Davin, that we don't want to get wrong, whether or not we're going to enter God's kingdom or as Christianity teaches, we're going to spend an eternity in hell. Does that concern you at all when you think about that? I might be the wrong guy to be asking these questions to. Why is that? Whether I go to heaven or I go to hell. <laughs> doesn't matter to me. It doesn't concern you? It doesn't concern me whatsoever. To be in the lake of fire, torment. If I go to heaven, I'm going to see my friends. If I go to hell, I'm going to meet even more friends. <laughs> Not really. The Bible I'm says, just saying. But when the Bible talks about hell, it says it's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm sure you've heard someone respond that way before. Oh man, I don't care about going to hell because I'm going to be there with all my friends, like having a big party. You know better than that, and I know better than that. And I think oftentimes those that respond that way know better than that, but it's kind of a coping mechanism. Who really wants to envision themselves spending an eternity in what the Bible calls, as you heard me share, the lake of fire, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm never dies, where there will be torment forever and ever and ever. The smoke of their torment will continue to rise, Scripture talks about. That should strike a chord of terror in us as Christians, but it should also strike in us a chord of urgency to proclaim the gospel to people so that they don't end up spending an eternity in hell. Don't be derailed when people respond that way. You need to continue to, again, in gentleness and love, help them realize that hell is no joke, that it's real. And unless they repent and place their faith in Christ, that's where they'll spend eternity. That's not a harsh thing to do. It's the most loving thing we can do for people. Yeah. Here's the thing, Devin, and I want to I want to cut to the chase with you, and I want to shoot straight with you because I care about you. That this to me is the most important thing in the world. Because if we die, we spend an eternity in hell. As light as much as we make light of it. Here, it's not if we die; it's when we die. Good point. When okay. we die, yeah. right? Yeah. If we spend an eternity in hell. That's not going to be a fun thing. We may make light of it here now, but that's a serious thing. But see, I don't believe in that. Yeah. I don't believe in eternity anywhere. When when it's over, it's over. But Davin, have you ever been wrong about anything? I I could be wrong about this. Yeah. And that and that's and that's why I'm talking to you because here's the thing. There was a Jewish rabbi, and I know you know his name. He was prophesied in Isaiah 53, and he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God but by him. And the, the ultimate question that we all have to face in life is, was Jesus Christ, this man who split time, this man whose life we, we base our entire dating system around, said that he is the only way through which we can have everlasting life and that we are in danger of the judgment of God because of our sin. Do you consider yourself a sinner, Devin? Well, you know, all human beings are sinners. If God were to judge you on the basis of how you live, do you think you'd be good enough to get I, in the heaven? I don't worry about because a God of my understanding doesn't judge me. The Bible talks about idolatry. And, right. and, and, and idolatry is not just making a, a little statue that you'd bow down and worship, but it's creating a God in your own image. That means creating a God right. that suits your own desires exactly. and your own needs. And the thing you don't want to happen on the day of judgment is to stand before God and to hear him say to you, that you were an idolater because you didn't submit to how he revealed himself to us in terms of how he is. So here's my question to you. Okay. This is going to reveal to you in reality where you stand morally before God. How many lies would you say you've told over the course of your lifetime? Wow. I've never thought about that. I don't know. More than you can count maybe? Yes. What do you call someone who's told more lies than they can count? A liar. <laughs> yeah. Hard to say sometimes, but yeah. Have you ever in your life taken anything that didn't belong to you regardless of its value? 
Wow. Well, I'm 56 years old. That's, uh, yes, I have. What do you call someone who's taken things that don't belong to them? Well, I don't consider myself a thief, but I guess you'd call him a thief. Yeah. Jesus said if you look at a woman to lust after her, well, you know, you've let's, committed let's, adultery let's, with already in her let's, in your let's heart. Let's come back for a couple seconds here, right? Okay, sure. Remember I said, I'm Jewish and you're Christian, right? right? The only difference between the two of us is you have to go through an interpreter and I go right to the main source. <laughs> well, this is the thing, though. Actually, you had to go through an interpreter through, through, through the Jewish system because you had to have sacrifices made on your behalf. Well, so that's uh, not, no. Um, well, you know, yeah, the, 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 entire, the entire sacrificial yeah, system. But that's not yeah. happening anymore. So how would you get forgiveness for sin? You don't sin. You don't sin. You don't. You try your hardest not to sin and you make amends whenever possible. So you do sin though. We're obviously. humans. We all yeah. will lie. We'll all cheat. We'll yeah. all do something wrong. I try to make amends like that. We've broken God's law. By your own admission, you've lied, you've stolen. You know, well, now don't be pointing the finger. If, if Listen, you look, when you, you point the finger at somebody, right at me, right. you got three oh, more pointing right I'm, back I'm, at you. I, I so assure you. Don't be pointing the finger at me. I assure you, I assure you, I'm worse than you. <laughs> right, I'm just many, letting many you know. Absolutely. But, All right. but again, I, I'm not judging you. And Davin, this is a mission of care. I just want you to know that. I care about you. I know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the you life. You don't know me. I, 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 so, I don't need to know you to care about you. I care, you're a fellow human being. Like you said, do the most yeah. good you can for as many people. And my point is this. I think in your heart you know that you're guilty, that you violated God's law, that you're deserving of, of His wrath and judgment. The good news is, is when Jesus Christ came down to this earth, the prophesied Messiah, and He went to that cross, that's where He bore the wrath of sinners in their place. I mean, you think about that. You try to conceive that. Who in the world would do that? But like you, what you just said to me was, Jesus did this and Jesus did that. Sure. Let's get real here. You weren't around and I wasn't around. This is all hearsay. You don't know that for a fact. Well, you might I, believe it in your heart, but you don't know that for a fact. Is, okay, wait a second. And you don't know that God is going to say yes. You don't know that God's here or here. Do you know that I don't know that? I know this. I, yes, I do know that. How do you know that I don't because know Because I don't know that. He doesn't know it, and he doesn't know it. And you know what? It, we, as human beings, have to believe in a power that's greater than us in order for us to be to, to put the blame or help us with getting through to the next level in life. But how do you know we need to do that? Because otherwise, if we didn't, we'd be a miserable yeah. wreck. You know, I, it's, it's funny because if you take, if you take the, uh, the Jesus out of the picture, Muslim What do you have against Jesus? I have nothing against Jesus per se. But well, why do you want to take him out? Because I don't put my, I don't put my faith. And that's another thing is I don't have faith, okay? And without faith, you can't have Jesus. But what is faith? Do you understand? Tell me something that you know from history that you haven't put your faith in. Do you believe George Washington was the first president of the United States? Oh yeah, I do. Were you there? Did you see him? There's a big, there's a big difference between something that has occurred in. 10 generations or 100 generations ahead of me versus five or six generations. So you believe behind. Alexander the Great was, was real? No idea who Alexander the Great is, so there you go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I get it. A common tactic that is often used by unbelievers when you're sharing the gospel with them is to look at you and say, hey, how do you know? You weren't there, you didn't see that, so you don't really know if it's true. And as you just saw, one of the things you can do is kind of turn it back on them and very gently and humbly and lovingly say, are there things that you believe that you didn't witness, that you didn't personally see? Well, obviously there are, and then they'll end up kind of recognizing, oh yeah, I guess that's true, and they'll see their inconsistency. One of the things we do on the Living Waters podcast is try to help give you answers like that for questions that may be posed by unbelievers when you're sharing the gospel. So if you haven't checked out the Living Waters podcast, make sure to do that. It's packed full of episodes where we get real and raw and equip you with truth. What I'm saying is that there are things that you believe that you've never seen. And I don't push myself yeah, yeah. or my beliefs on anybody. In my religion, in the Jewish religion, we don't believe in hell, right? So but, there's never going to be a, a question whether or not I go to hell or not because I'm not going there. Yeah, and Davin, what I'm saying to you is that I'm sharing this with you because I care. So here's, here's my point in this. This isn't comfortable, right? We're having this discussion. You feel like I'm pushing this on you. I'm really not. I'm simply stating to you what I believe is absolute truth. My point to you is this. Either Jesus Christ was who he said he was, or he wasn't. For me, this is an eternal thing. You're a great guy, you're a nice guy, but the, par the problem is, is your niceness and your goodness 
isn't going to get you into God's kingdom. I can tell that you're a man who values truth. In other words, you're not a hogwash talker. You're not like, yeah, your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth. The, the law of non-contradiction, it's impossible. If I, say, if I say that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's the Son of God, through his death and resurrection, repentance and faith in that, right. you can be saved and have your sins washed away. And then a Muslim comes and says, oh no, Jesus was not he was not the son of God. He was just a prophet and, you know, the greatest prophet, the last and greatest prophet. They can't be both true. That's a contradiction. And but what that's I'm saying, not true. Everybody's entitled to their own belief, okay? Everybody's but it doesn't in, make it true. But it does. Jesus being the son of God is your truth, correct? It's the truth. No, is it your truth? It's the truth. You know it to be the truth. Yes. Okay, so you feel that it's the truth. I believe it's the truth. Whatever. I, it to be the truth. I believe that it's not the truth. But that doesn't Whoa. change reality. It, you can come and say to me, I believe that the sun is blue, square, comes out at night, and is freezing cold. You can believe that. You can say that. You can say, this it is my truth. On, it depends on what day you come out, because that you, could be true. Okay. Well, now, now we're talking nonsense. You know that's it's not, not nonsense. reality. It's not nonsense. You really believe that the sun can be square and blue and come out at night and is freezing cold? Well, no. I believe that the sun will... It depends on how you visualize the sun. Yes, I've seen the sun. No, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what yeah. I'm saying. So yeah. that's my whole point. And, and Davin, right. let me just okay, say this. I, <laughs> as an ambassador for Christ who's out there sharing the gospel with others, you have to make it your aim to be a gleaner. A gleaner? What in the world is that? <laughs> a gleaner is someone who's determined to learn from others how they can answer. I mean, the Proverbs talk about that, that the, the wise study how to answer. And so you want to be one of those people that thinks, oh, well, wait a minute. Is there something I can learn from others who have used certain things that have been effective? I got that whole thing about the sun, right? Being blue and made out of ice and coming out at night from Ray Comfort. And I've come to learn that it's very effective. And as you saw with Davin, as I put that to him, even though he tried to fight it, right? And, and, and not get caught, he ended up saying, okay, you know what? You got me there. You're right. No, that doesn't make sense. And again, our point is not to get people trapped or to put out gotcha questions or to win an argument. Because as you've heard, you can win the argument but lose the person and in essence you've lost. Because our aim is to win people with love and kindness and compassion. And so you can do it in such a way where you put the truth to them but you do it in a manner where it will help them to realize the error of their thinking and their logic. And then they can end up getting to a place where they're now more open and they're humbled in a sense, not in that you were trying to humiliate them, but they were humbled by their own logic and reasoning. And then they're primed for you to be able to move on from there and continue to share truth with them. And that's all that I'm saying yeah. is that there's a truth. We may disagree. We may both be wrong, but we can't both be, be right if there's a contradiction. Right. And, and I'm so glad that you've been uh, passionate enough to express yourself in this discussion. You know, I come from the Middle East. People kill each other over this stuff. So the fact that we can talk peacefully. Well, I believe that every man has the right to believe in what he desires. Right, and it doesn't okay? mean it's right, but, but he has a right to believe but it. But no agree. man has the right to push his will Absolutely. on another person. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. What they do in the Middle East is they kill each other if you don't convert. I'm not gonna kill you, you're not gonna kill me. But my hope is that you'll give this thought today. And, and I know you agree that people need to follow their convictions. That's why I'm talking to you, because Jesus said to me to go into all the world and to share the gospel. And my hope is that today, you'll at least walk away thinking about what we talked about, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And rice. If you repent and trust in him, he'll set you free and give you life. Hey, Davin, it's been great, man. Thank you again. And Absolute I really pleasure. enjoyed this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Wow, the Jew and the Arab actually ended things peacefully. Miracles really do happen. Things will get passionate. That's okay. We should be passionate about truth. But there's a way to be passionate about truth without going off the rails and getting crazy and harsh and mean and rude. You can do it in a way where you represent Christ effectively like scripture teaches us. And so I hope that you'll determine to get out there and find your Davin. There are a lot of them around and the gospel's still the same and God's spirit can continue to enable you to be an effective witness for him. It's an all new season of Way of the Master. What's your name? Lovey. Lovey? I can't call you Lovey, I'm a married man. Now, is there an afterlife? What do you think? You don't want to force your faith on somebody, but at the same time, it's healthy and good to explore yeah, yeah, yeah. the truth, it, it right? Do you think ultimately sin is wrong because it violates the standards of a holy God? 
Yes. I'm a good person. I'm going to give you a moral speedometer to judge if you've broken God's law or not. I've never read the Bible ever. My dad told me to. That's the next thing I need to do. It's the world's biggest selling book of all time. You should be educated on what it says. You know what it says? It says that you're an idiot if you follow it. You're a sheep. Nah. No, it yes, doesn't. that's what it says. It says Darn. you're a sheep if you don't. You're a lost sheep. You're no, going astray. No, You don't have to go to hell for all eternity. So God has commissioned us to share the gospel. That's the good news. But we have to remember the role of the Holy Spirit, right? The role of the Holy Spirit is is to convict and to convert. You're smiling, why are you smiling? Well, because of what you said. Makes sense. But when you hear this, is this doing something in your heart and mind? Is this kind of becoming personal it's, for you? It's freeing my soul. Join us for the new season of Way of the Master. Visit wayofthemaster.com. If you are blessed, encouraged, edified, inspired by that video, then you're definitely gonna love this one. This is where I ran into a homeless man in Huntington Beach, and we had an amazing, and I would say a divine encounter. So make sure to check it out.